Hi there, welcome to Bosch Professional Live. I'm Danny. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to be talking about our detection, detection product range, or we like to call them our wall scanners. Wall scanners, yes. Um, again, these, are, these machines are absolutely perfect for avoiding the dreaded pipe strike or cable strike. Um, obviously, incredibly expensive to deal with through insurance. Um, this gives you the best opportunity you can of finding those items in the walls and avoiding them. Mm. And also, if you want to find uh, studs, for instance, to actually um, hang things on them, then again, perfect machines for that. So basically, an all, a machine or a tool that can save you a lot of money and a lot of hassle. Yeah. So from the previous live stream, hopefully you caught it, we did Starlock, and in that range, we probably did about five products, and then we did a plenty of, like, a oh. big, long list of different accessories. Yeah. Luckily today, we've only got to worry about a core range of three products, so that's good for us, because yep. it's less work. <laughs> um, but we're not necessarily going to say it's going to be a, a short live stream. It still might be quite an in-depth one, because over the years, we've had plenty of different products, mm -hmm. and these products do require a little bit of skill to use correctly. So That's we'll it. be happy to do mm. a bit of an education, we'll tell you about the products, but we'd like to teach you as well how to get the optimal results out of each one of the different products that we've got in our range. That's it. It's a, don't forget, it's a live stream, so feel free to pop your questions in the chat. We're obviously going to be talking about our detection or our wall scanner range, but again, as always, feel free to ask any questions you guys have got out there on any of our products. Or on accessories as well. Happy to answer anything that comes our way. Okay. So uh, Lizzie is not about, unfortunately. She's not in today. But we've got Rob back, and he's going to be on the desk, and he's going to be asking questions. Luckily, we don't have a camera for Rob. But if you hear a disembodied voice... Hello. That's going I'm to be in. Rob. There we go. <laughs> okay. So um, I guess we should start off with the entry-level product that we've got in the range. That is uh, our GMS 120. Yep. This is quite a well-respected machine. It's been out for in the market for quite some time now, hasn't it? That's right. Because this machine's been out in the market for as long as you say, it's definitely the most affordable out there. Yes. Um, and we'll always say it's always good to have at least one form of detector. You'll see as we go through the range, you get some additional benefits as you mm. go up through the product range. But the GMS120, you know, that is yeah. not the first one we ever did, but this has been by far the workhorse for our detector range for the many, many years. Yeah. Like I said, um, this one's reasonably affordable, actually. This is, uh, this is uh, a, an incredibly useful machine. Um, for DIYs as well, I've known you use this as well. Mm. So, it's, uh... so what you've got, I mean, it's got a, it's got a name and structure, GMS 120, and the main point of information here is this machine will go up to 120 millimeters. Mm. Okay, it's important to note that depending on the material you are trying to detect, that that maximum detection depth will change slightly. So when you're trying to find things, as I said, uh, metal, for example, mm. that's when you're going to be looking at your, your maximum depth of detection, because this is an induction or an uh, electromagnetic detector. Yeah. So obviously with metal material, that's how it's going to, that's mm. its most optimal material for finding. Mm. However, it does other materials. It will also do, as Danny said, wooden studs. However, the there's a slight reduction in, in the maximum detection depth. So we're looking at 38 millimeters. Really? Basically, if you're looking for wooden studs, they're mm -hmm. right up against the back of drywall or, uh, or, or plaster skim, so it's nice and easy to find. Uh, Sorry and guys, just going to jump in here. Uh, people can hear you absolutely fine, but there's a little bit of choppy video going on at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, I'm thinking I might just stop the stream and restart it again just to see if we can fix that because uh, currently it's unwatchable. But thankfully they can hear us. Well, that's fine. No. Don't worry. So when, when we come back, though, I'm going to do the entire introduction again for any late starters. <laughs> I okay. don't think you need to do the introduction, but uh, yeah, let's let's see if we can restart it and get it going a bit smoother. Okay. Okay.
So welcome back. I think we're proving the fact that this is obviously a live stream. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't have any of these technical difficulties. However, uh, hopefully we've ironed out some of the video issues we had. Uh, I think we're having trouble with the synchronization between our studio here and YouTube. But again, hopefully that's all sorted. So uh, we haven't got very far then, had we? No, uh, we just introdu introduced the, uh, the GMS-120, mm -hmm. uh, one of our, um, our entry-level machines for the detector range. That's right. I think we uh, discussed uh, very briefly that by, this is by far the most affordable and most entry-level detector, mm. but still is jam-packed full of loads of great features. Yeah, just, just remember that what, saving the cost of a one single um, pipe strike or cable mm -hmm. strike is going to pay for these machines outright in one go. Right. So. Yep. And it's, it's a small, compact, lightweight device, cost-effective. So one of these things that you would recommend, you know, if, there are obviously other products in the range that we will talk, talk about shortly, mm -hmm. but from a little handheld device that you can just chuck in your tool bag, yep. absolutely excellent. So, um, Rob, could we cut over to the overhead camera for a second, and I want to go through some of the features. Obviously, uh, the machine is called the GMS120. Um, the 120 here stands for the maximum detection depth, and as this is a, an inductive, or uses electromagnetic induction to detect materials, that means this is dealing uh, best detecting at metal in the walls, mm. for example. So this is talking about ferrous and non-ferrous metals. We even have a dedicated button on the front here, so we can um, optimize this tool for detecting mm. metal up to that what, maximum of 120 millimeters. Mm. However, that's not all this device does. It also does up to 38 millimeters uh, for looking for materials other than metal, such as, say, wooden studs, which mm -hmm. is excellent. Uh, and lastly, it also detects uh, live wires. So this is passively on all the time. So it's always uh, attempting to discover any live wires, so it saves you having to necessarily uh, damage uh, the property, yep. or more importantly, injure yourself. So it's always looking for uh, mains wires, but if you do find one, you can then toggle it into this specific mode, and that will calibrate that tool to take up to a maximum of 50 millimeters, uh, help you dial in exactly where that is. That's it, or find the dead center of the actual signal itself, so uh, good for isolating uh, cables and balls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the screen itself, let me switch it on. Uh, you can see that the screen can be backlit, so you've got a button here to sw switch on the backlight. Very hard for you to see on screen, that probably blows out the exposure there, yeah. but it's very nice, very bright backlight, so if you're working in dim and dark conditions, it's yeah. perfect. And then you have a final button on the bottom here that just switches off the, uh, the audio signal. So it's important to know, and when we do a little demo later today, you'll hear this machine makes a number of noises as, it's, as you're scanning along the wall. Yeah. And more importantly, if you, if you come along across a, a live wire, uh, it'll make a very, very clear audible signal. The visual signals also are very good for this machine mm -hmm. as well. The product itself is robust and uh, IP54, I think that's more than adequate for most job sites anyway. Yeah. Runs off a single uh, nine volt battery. That's all you really need, really. Mm. Now, if I cut back to the wide for a second, so the product itself, uh, it's a, as you said, it's a wall scanner. Now, there's, we want to dismiss some illusions when yeah. it comes to how these tools are used. Many people think it's like a magic wand, Harry mm -hmm. Potter, oh, can't say that, uh, a magic wand that you can wander around, uh, a wave at the wall and it'll automatically tell you. Yeah. It's not quite as good as that. I don't think we have any device that allows that. No. You have to be a little bit more progressive with how you use these. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it has to be placed onto the wall. And with a device like this, pref, we, we recommend up to four individual scans across a, across, across a surface That's as it. you're Ex working. Exceeding that amount of scans is, is, is no bad thing either, so scan around uh, thoroughly. Um, that's just detected the desk there. One. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, scan them all thoroughly. Um, obviously, take your time. At the end of the day, you want to prevent potential injury or damage to the property, and you don't want to be drilling three holes to find a stud in a wall when one mm. would do. So That's right. Um, as I said, we are going to go over to one of the walls in a minute and we'll show you a demonstration of how this tool works. But just to finish off the introduction, the tool is excellent because it actually it, it differentiates between those different materials. So as discussed, it will detect metal, but that's both. It will tell you if it's ferrous or non-ferrous metal. Yep. Perfect for copper pipes. Mm -hmm. And it will also, again, detect a non-metal material, or, or, or like the wooden stud. And finally, again, it will, detect it will indicate whether or not it's detecting specifically a live wire. Mm. So all four of those uh, will come up differently on the screen. They have a little, inter a little in uh, icon on the LCD screen that shows you exactly what those things are. Yeah. Uh, so I cut to the overhead very quickly. I'll see if I can do a very simple demonstration on the desk before I take over to a real wall. Um, and you can see here, as I move it along, you get a number of different indications. Luckily, actually, roughly in the center here, we do have 
something. You can see every now and then it finds the center of it. That's probably the center of our desk, actually. It is, yeah. Okay, and you've got a number of these little indicators where it tells you whether or not you're getting closer or further from the center of that material, which is excellent, especially if you're trying to look for something to put uh, to put a screw in, say a stud, and you're actually looking for the center of uh, a stud wall, um, or if you're just trying to avoid the center of whatever you're looking at, you can, or you can mark it down if you're doing survey work, if you're looking at renovation, and things like that. Yeah. Now, these tools are excellent when working in uh, properties where you might not actually have the plans, and when you get to some of the later products, that's an excellent device, to, yeah. uh, the, the 200, for example, yeah. it's an excellent device for looking at um, planning or, or, or Surveying uh, an yeah. older building, for example. Even, even if it comes into, uh, you've had you've had some people in doing drywalling, and you can't find any of the sockets afterwards. Mm. This will help you locate the cables going to the sockets, and also the socket box itself. So, yeah, very useful. That's right. Now, this is the only product in the range that has the the little circle in the hole, uh, the, the hole in the middle. Really good if you want to be able to mark with a pencil uh, mm. the centre of where you're looking for, because obviously that is dead centre of, of the the scanner. Uh, and then you've got, you can see, hopefully in certain light. And again, when we go to the wall, you'll see this little LED ring. There's four little separate sections. They light up either red, yellow, or green, depending on whether or not you're on top of material, you're close, mm. or if you're safe. So typically, if you're not scanning anything, it'll be green, and then it'll go yellow, and then it'll go red. Yeah. So, so uh, obviously, with the electric, um, if it picks up an electronic field, mm. um, it'll flash red to give you that audible and visual warning. Yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to show you that in the wall. So actually, we've got a slightly different setup. Mm -hmm. So Dan's gonna jump onto one of the cameras and we're gonna, I'm gonna quickly dash off. Okay. And, uh, You'll need that. I'll need, yeah, exactly, need my pencil. I will, oh, I've gotta tuck it in there, that's it, good. <laughs> um, so as I said, we're not, I'm not going to go very far. Obviously, the walls that we've got in the studio are mostly drywall. Uh, they're relatively thin, um, but I'm not actually 100% sure what we've got behind most of these walls. I can guess, but with something like the GMS 120, I can get a much better idea of what's behind the wall. So let's get to, uh, let's get to the wall. Now, um, as I said, it's, it's, it is drywall. I'm going to set this uh, device, I'm going to switch the, mic, the audio signal back on and I'm going to set it in the first mode, which is like the universal mode. Remember the three different settings we've got, universal, metal, and then the live wire, and I'll hopefully be able to show you each one of these modes throughout this presentation. So remember, <clears throat> it's not a magic wand, you have to place it onto the... I oh, found something already. You have to place the scanner onto the wall, and then you have to make nice, slow, and progressive sweeps across the area. You need to do at least, I would say, 40 millimeters, backwards and forth, to get a good, accurate result. And again, up to three passes, maybe four, to get a more and more accurate uh, uh, detection as you go along. The tools work by detecting difference in the material. So the more information you can give the tool, the more accurate the results are going to be. So let's see what I can find in this drywall. All right, you can see it's making, it's, hopefully you can hear on mic, it's making some chirping noises at me. I'm going to continue going past through until I've done a few more scans before I have a look at some results. All right, so I think here. Where are we? Only got something there. There you go, it's here. There you go. Right. Got to apologise for that annoying beeping <laughs> that's coming through all the time. There you go. So it's well worth having the indicator. Well, yes. I'll switch the I'll switch the beeper off just because I don't want to annoy you guys. But hopefully you can see on the screen there. Is that visible on your camera, Danny? Yeah, I'm just going. You see what it's detected is detected the centre of uh, a magnet, something metal, magnetic in the middle there. You've got your icon on the top saying it is a magnetic metal, and then you've got your centre mark here. So it's telling me that this is directly the centre. I could put a hole in here and mark that as where, in this wall, you've got your metal stud. If I go to go along, I could scan further along and find other things in the wall. I'm pretty sure if I go along far enough, I will find the another metal stud because they should be around 60 centimetres apart. And about it's just about there. There you go. Much easier. Much, much better result there. Now. One thing you guys might realize, uh, you, if you've used these tools before or you've seen other people talk about these tools, one of the things that's important to note is that external interference can be a big issue. 
Okay, I haven't made life easy for me because I've left my smartwatch on and I was probably getting a bit of interference at the beginning there. But ideally what I should do is I should take the watch off and I will do that in a minute and see what the results are like. However, if you've got any kind of electronic interface, in, interference in the, in the room, uh, be that uh, uh, a TV. TV for instance, definitely. Yeah, yeah. TV for example, mm -hmm. or uh, any kind of electronic device that you're wearing. Even jewellery can cause some issues because remember this device is using electromagnetic as, a, as an induction electromagnetic sensor. Microphones. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that in there. Yeah, I've got, I haven't got my phone on me at all. I've got that, I've got, as per all live streams, I've got that off me. But maybe the microphone itself might be causing issues. So there are a few things that we are wearing today that could make trouble. But as you can see, not at the moment. One good trick and one important trick is making sure you're in, you have isolated or you've, you've earthed yourself. Sorry, not, not insulated. You, the opposite of it. You've earthed yourself. So halfway through that, I would press my hand across on, on the wall and then continue doing my scanning. What I'm doing there is I'm earthing myself. So use the tools without gloves and also in this particular case if you're going to do an application like this uh, I'd have suitable footwear that will make sure that you've got some degree of earthing going on okay I can do this again one more time I think I might take my watch off again and see if I get a different result all right I'll put the beep back on just to annoy you guys okay and the important trick here is nice progressive scans backwards and forwards there we go, a much, much faster, much more positive result. Magnetic metal, there's your stud, okay? Just by taking off my smartwatch, I got a much quicker result. Now, um, one of the other things we can do is uh, if we're detecting for live wires. Now, I've got a plug socket, I've made life easy for myself, so if we go down here, <clears throat> I've got a plug socket. Surprise, surprise, I reckon there's some power here. So what we're gonna do, uh, I'll scan in the universal mode first to see uh, whether or not I've got power and I'll hopefully you'll be able to hear and maybe see uh, the, how the interface changes when I've got a live wire. Oh, must. That was pretty quick, hopefully you heard that, I'll scan it back again. I'll move this cable out of the way so it's not, so it's not that we're detecting. Yeah, there's definitely something down here that's live. It's definitely telling me it's chirping away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it into the live wire specific mode, or the, which means it's going to now narrow down the sensor so it's specifically looking for these live wires. And I'll be able to get a much quicker result. I still will do a number of passes, despite the fact that I think I found it. Nice and slow. And there we go. My, you might not be able to see on the screen there, but that is rough, that is, I say roughly, that's now telling me that this is now dead center. Okay, so pretty good guess that there's a live wire here. Number of scans left and right, and you can then dial it down, but I'm pretty confident it's coming down, and it's probably running along the bottom there. So yes, the GMS 120, cost effective, but does a lot for you. And it, it's one of those tools that if you're not sure what's behind the wall, what other solutions have you got other than I don't know, Dan, knocking a hole in the wall? It's basically knocking holes in the wall and, uh, and then getting the inspection camera out again. But Exactly. Now, we don't normally talk prices, but I think it's important to note with a device like this, this is less than 100 quid, okay? So having that level of uh, trying to, well, I say, uh, removing some level of uncertainty when doing any kind of work in uh, property that you may or may not have plans for, I mean, it's a no-brainer. But we have some other options. So let me get back to the desk, talk about a few other features and uh, maybe introduce one of the next products. All right, come join me, Dan. Let's go to the next, let's, well, I mean, maybe what we could do. I know, Rob, have we had any questions on the GMS 120 yet? No, nothing on the GMS 120, but it's worth shouting out that we've got Matthew Tucker in the chat, a regular, nice to see him again. Uh, John McDonnell and Stuart Andrews, they're certainly active in there. But any questions that you've got about these products or anything else, just throw them in there and uh, I'll make sure to ask the guys. Yeah, I mean, as we said at the beginning of this live stream, I must admit this is probably going to be a bit more nerdy. Mm. It is going to be a bit more educational. We've only got these three products uh, to talk about, um, so we have to go into a bit of depth. But we thought, hey, it's a live stream. Hopefully, we can answer some of your questions. But more importantly, I think it's really, it's, I think it's really important for us to put a video out there, really going into some depth on how these tools work, both the limitations and tricks on how to make this work. Remember that the GMS 120, you really need to consider earthing yourself to the wall, one hand on the wall, bare minimum while you're scanning. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good point to mention there because uh, you do get customers from time to time saying, I've bought it and it's not working. Obviously, the, uh, 
these instructions are in the instruction manual. Who reads them, eh? Who reads them? Um, we do, because we're sad. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of things that you can pick up in the instruction manual, as well as what we've, we've uh, sp spoken about today, that will certainly um, let you unlock all the full potential mm. of that particular machine. That's right. Multiple scans, that's also very yeah. important. So those two things alone, if you have a GMS 120 and you're not getting the results that you think you should be getting, mm. those two, or three things actually. Mm. Remove any jewelry, that's always a good thing, especially mm. smart devices. Having a, not having a phone on you might yep. be beneficial just for when you're doing the scanning. Uh, earthing yourself as best as possible, hand on the wall, excellent, mm. and then multiple passes, that's how you get the most accurate results out yep. of the material, uh, out of these products, regardless of material. So Rob, I think, if you haven't got any questions, I think we can move on to the next product, what do you reckon? Absolutely agree, okay. let's do it. So the next product will be uh, our DTEC 120, thank you there very you much, go. Dan. That's the DTEC 120 then. Okay, I'll pop that into the overhead camera. Okay, so what we've got, we've got a bit of a departure from the traditional GMS 120. So that's that. There's that your 120. Similar size. Similar um, size, yep. Slightly different design, different approach to, to scanning here. That's right. The most obvious thing that I see is now that we're running on a different battery platform. We're not no longer using the, the 9 volt battery. Now we've got the option of either running uh, uh, AA batteries yep. with the little adapter. Adapter, adapter, or we can run our normal professional. 12 volt battery, this one's a two amp hour, but if you really wanted, I guess you could go up to a, could you go up to a six on this? I think yeah. that's a bit overkill, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're gonna be away from a charger for a considerably longer time, then mm -hmm. yeah, obviously go for a higher amp hour exactly. battery. Two amp hour for this is absolutely perfect. It's probably a golden sort of sweet spot for mm -hmm. Now, the, the biggest departure for these two products is the fact that this tool uses a this, this product uses a different uh, mode of scanning. Mm. The GMS120, as I said, is inductive, electromagnetic. This is radar. And this comes with a few advantages. But before we talk about that, let's talk about some of the specs on this machine. It is a DTEC 120, and just like the GMS120, that's the maximum detection uh, depth that it can do. Uh, and when it comes to detection, it's actually one, uh, a maximum depth of 120 millimeters mm. for wooden studs. So different to how the GMS works. Yeah. The GMS had a maximum of 120 for metal, non-ferrous and ferrous metal. Right? But this is as it's using radar, uh, and has a slightly different uh, system of working. Yeah. It's more optimized for wood and studs and things. However, it still will detect uh, metal. Uh, inversely, it's, it's, it's flipped now. Mm. So it detects metal at 38 millimeters um, and has a little bit extra depth of detection when it comes to live wires. So mm. instead of being 50 millimeters, now it's a maximum depth of 60 millimeters for detecting mm. live wires. Yeah. Now, the technology is different for this. Because it's using radar, mm. It doesn't require multiple uh, passes. No, it's literally just pop it up against the wall and, mm -hmm. the, and the way you go, really. Now, let's, uh, let's be honest. Which, remember, we like to be honest with the audience out there. there are, there's a trade-off here. Mm. Right? What you've got, you've got a much faster device that doesn't require calibration. Mm. Danny says, pop it on the wall, it automatically gives you, it starts taking readings yep. and gets to, the, gets to the readings really quickly. And I'll show you that in the demonstration in a moment. That's really useful if you don't have much space to do it to multiples to do a scan. Because remember, you need to do at least 40 millimeters minimum to get any decent data. Yep. The, the wider, the better. Um, you don't need to do that. You can plonk it on the wall and get your detection straight away. However, the trade-off is the the, uh, the DTEC 120 doesn't give you material, so you won't be able to differentiate between your wood and metal studs, for yep. example. So this device is really good for finding something, but not discriminating between the different materials. That's it. I mean, if, you, if you're looking for studs or you're expecting to find studs on a wall and you're looking for also pipe work as well, mm -hmm. it doesn't take too much to work out. Regular spaced items are going to be the studs uh, and items that are spaced sporadically within that are going to be mm -hmm. Other, other sources. That's right. But uh, the device still detects live wires and will give you an indication if it comes across uh, any kind of live wire. So again, it's keeping you safe while you're working on the job, making sure that there's absolutely no misunderstanding whether or not there's a chance that there's a live wire mm. strike possible, a live wire in that wall that might cause yourself injury or yeah. damage the property. At the end of the day, if you're trying to avoid something, if in doubt, don't drill that. That's right. Uh, if I could quickly cut to the overhead, please, Rob. All right, and you can see on the screen we've got, uh, obviously, we've got a nice simple on and off button. I won't switch it on because it will detect the desk and make a lot of noise. And you can see uh, it's got your three different mode buttons here. Okay, so you can see that that's it. E e easy tracking between the different things. You've got your universal mode, uh, you've, got your, well, you've got your universal, you've got your drywall, and then you've got your concrete mode at the end here. Okay, so again, just like the GMS 120, what we want you to do is, if you know what material you're scanning, 
you can select the relevant button uh, to give the tool um, as much information as it needs to know about the material that it's scanning mm. because uh, just like any scanner it works by detecting difference so it's, it's, got, it's scanning the wall and looking at what is different in that wall and then telling you or interpreting that information and giving you a good um, good information. Um, I'm going to go back to the wall, Dan, so if yep. you jump on the camera again and I'll just finish off this last little bit of the presentation. Uh, the machine itself, just like the GMS120, is nicely ruggedized. The screen is protected by a nice rubber fascia here. Um, it's also a, a sturdy, sturdy product regardless and it's IP54, so again, more than enough protection for you when working on site. I mean, they are expensive products. I wouldn't be throwing this into a bucket of cement in the back of your van or anything, so I would look after it. But this should be perfectly fine for your normal normal on the site bumps and knocks. So let me get to my, get to my spot on the wall. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put that into uh, probably drywall mode. That's the most obvious one, of course. And I'm gonna plonk it on the wall straight away. Found it. You saw how with the GMS120 I had to do a few more scans, obviously to dial in, but you can see because it's using radar, it's much, much quicker. How the interface works is you've got a number of rings and it'll tell you when you're closer to the center and then as soon as you hit the center, you'll get, you'll get a clear indication on that and I'll show you and then we'll show a close up. So I know where it is already, so I can just plunk up the wall, not far off. Do you know what? I'm gonna mute that so I don't annoy you. And then you can see it just needs to go a little to my left and there you are. You can see that on the screen. You zoom in for me, Dan. That's bang on the center. And obviously when I'm on the mark, I'm, you're, it's gonna give off that audio tone. I'm gonna unmute it for a second. All right, absolutely spot on. I'll do one more scan. Progress, progressing and dead on center. So as Danny and I explained to you already, that's how this tool works. This is why this tool is so quick. It uses a different technology. So if you are looking for something, if you're looking for anything and you know, you, you know their wall has studs, either wooden or metal, you just want to find them so you can mount something, this tool makes this really quick. So again, when time is money, something like the Detect 120 is going to be your best option for finding something quickly. If I slowly go down to the ground, we'll do the same thing again and see so you can hear what it sounds like when we find a live wire. Again, both this product and the GMS120 automatically have this built in. You don't have to set this to live wire mode. It'll automatically detect it. Okay, you see that hopefully you can hear the tones change. It's now beeping. I'm going to mute that so I don't annoy you. Uh, and it might be hard to see on the screen, but there's a little, a little warning sign there saying, well, there was a little warning there, so there he is again, uh, telling you that this is uh, electric, that there is a electricity in this wall and dead center is right there. It's okay. important to note as well that this only shows up if there's a, uh, a consumer unit on that particular um, mm. item as well. So if you've got a light or something plugged in, Correct. Uh, drawing power, that's when it will read it. If you've just got a random socket there, just whether it's switched on or off, um, you're still not going to have a reading. Yeah, and that's the same thing again for the GMS120. Uh, it's it, drawing energy through the, through the line is the best way of making sure that you detect the live wire. Okay, so let's go back to the desk, Dan, and see, uh, let's, let's round off the Detect 120. So as we said, we've hopefully made it very clear, and if you're just joining us, what we're doing is we're talking about a number of, two, number of detectors. We're currently looking at the difference between the Detect, uh, sorry, right. the GMS120 <laughs> and the Detect uh, 120. They sound very similar, but they use different modes for mm. detecting electromagnetic, inductive, and radar. This allows you to detect different materials, but it's a bit slower, whereas the Detect 120 is really quick mm. and very precise as well. Yeah. So, uh, Rob, I don't know, I mean, hopefully we're covering everything. Maybe we haven't got too many questions on this particular session. No, I think, uh, I think you're being very thorough, very detailed, and uh, no one's got any queries quite yet, so uh, I think you're covering uh, good ground there. Okay. Uh, I've taken my, uh, I, you may not have discussed, uh, I've had to take off my watch, so Rob, it's now your job to make sure that we're, we're keeping on time, because I can't tell anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's no problem, we'll, uh, we'll live stream for the next three hours, yeah? Now, uh, <laughs> now I probably could have actually kept my, uh, my watch on for the Detect 120, the Detect 120 uh, test, because actually it doesn't, get in, it doesn't get as confused as easily, because it's using a radar tech. But it's far more focused uh, beam mm. through the wall, so it's not picking up so much of the interference.
interference around the machine. That's right. Um, and I think, I think, as I said, we've, we've covered most of the information out there. Uh, what we don't have on site today is we didn't have a concrete demo. Mm. Um, but again, uh, both machines work in concrete. Um, the DTEC 120 is excellent, especially if you're trying to find rebar to either miss it, because yep. you don't want to necessarily be drilling through the rebar, or if you're trying to find it for whatever reason, mm. or you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to find exactly where that is, then again, setting to the concrete mode, the third mode there, uh, that'll allow you to find things like metal embedded rebar and stuff yep. like that. So if there are no questions, uh, what time we're we running okay on time? So we'll probably go to the final product, because actually the next product is actually so advanced that I think mm. we're going to spend most of the live stream talking about this one product. Yeah, there's quite a lot to talk about in this particular model. Um, this one we have here is DTECT, so same as the DTECT 120, we have the DTECT 200C. Right, I'll pop that into the overhead, hopefully it's not too big. Good. Oh, it's a bit. It's a little bit on the large size, but I can I can work with that. Right. So the name has changed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now it's gone up to two hundred. Guess what? Yep. Two hundred. Yeah. Up to a abs absolutely up to a maximum detection depth of two hundred millimeters. It also has a C in it because mm -hmm. it's a connected product, which allows you to now take some information off the device itself, so it is connected. Um, you're looking at a number of different detection depths. It does depend on the material, mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is where we're going to get into a tool that's more complicated, so it actually has um, different types of uh, material, including early age concrete or young green concrete. Um, it will also detect in your normal drywall and your breeze blocks and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. But you can see when we go through some of the menus, you've got a lot of options in regards to um, uh, the concrete that you're, detect you're trying to detect through. Okay, so when you're detecting in, in dry concrete, it has a maximum detection depth of 200 millimeters. Uh, when it's working in early age concrete, that's about 60 millimeters. And then other types of walls, about 80 millimeters, so like the dry wall we looked at earlier. If it's a wooden structure, mm. uh, again, it's about 38 yeah. millimeters detection depth. Really, the, li the limitations of early age concrete is going to be a high moisture content, mm -hmm. so that's going to interfere with it slightly there. That's right. Uh, the actual device itself does a few extra features. Um, in the previous products, we've been talking about things like the wooden studs, uh, your ferrous and non-ferrous metal, um, and obviously live wire. This product does those, but it does more. It will also work for plastic pipes, uh, water-filled uh, plastic pipes, so it can be empty or with water filled in it. Um, it will also work, uh, you'll see it's got a specific mode for water uh, leak detection. Mm. So you need to change the settings slightly, but it will detect whether or not there's a potential of uh, a leak because it yeah. will detect that uh, difference in the density in the wall due to the moisture in there, or the density, yeah. the uh, received signal coming from the wall. That's it. The beauty about this machine is you pick it up straight out of the box, put it on universal setting, works perfectly mm -hmm. for the majority of tasks. Um, if you dig, dig down deeper into the functionality of the machine, there's so many more settings mm -hmm. to use, um, giving you much more clarification about exactly what you'll find in there in the wall. Yeah, I mean, as I said, this is the most complicated product we've got, mm -hmm. so I think we'll take the opportunity to show some more of the interface, so we'll actually be able to talk about some of the options. Then we'll go over and do a little demo on the wall, because pictures where it didn't happen, of course. Mm -hmm. And really, with this device, you really need to show you it in action to show you all the different features you've got, because mm -hmm. with the two previous two devices, they only tell you whether or not the, the item in the wall is near and then the center. Mm. You'll see with a wall scanner of this type, you get a lot more information. You essentially are scanning lo portions of the wall, mm. lo long portions of the wall, and you're recording that data. That's it, you're getting visual representations of, of the material and the depth. Mm. So fantastic. Now, before we get into the details, it is worth noting this tool is very similar to a predecessor. Mm -hmm. I think you've got a couple of examples, but let's get the let's get the SV that's version. The SV version there. So you can see that's a 150 SV. So uh, very similar looking, very similar um, operation. Mm -hmm. Obviously not using the 12 volt system that, um, that our current one does. No. Nope. Uh, these were, I think it was, it was a whole bank of AA batteries in this one. It's, uh, it's uh, quite a selection of power. Cells in there. Oh well, yes, that's right. They go. They go. It's hard for you to see. Go into yeah. this section here. Um, the screen's been vastly improved. You have your standard LCD, monochrome, yeah. and now you've got a full color and animated screen. They, they work very similar. Uh, they are both wall scanners. They both have the little wheels, mm. which obviously tells you that they are for scrolling across material. Great for uh, rougher materials as well, whereas before you'd have to make contact with the material to move the, the scanner about, and there's a potential of maybe scratching the bottom of the machine. Mm -hmm. um, the wheels are quite rugged and quite capable of going over rougher materials. Right. 
a bit more hard wearing, mm -hmm. obviously keeping that that sensor away from the material as well, right, preventing yeah. damage. But there is actually a bit of a, there's a, actually a, an improvement between these two devices, so they're not necessarily the same. Oh, yes, true, the 150 had a maximum detection depth of, surprise, surprise, 150 yeah. millimeters. Mm -hmm. The 200 improves that, but there's been a lot of innovation put into the newer DTEC 200C, and we'll talk about we'll talk about these now, I guess. Yep. Thank you, Dan. Okay. So, first off, if I go into the menu screen, if I jump over to the overhead camera, now, that's quite good, actually. We've got a screen that looks good on the overhead camera. That's much better. You can see, first off, I've set, you can see at the top, you've got your battery indicator. You can see that it's currently set for drywall. Uh, the animation's giving you a clear indication of what you're supposed to do. Yes, you are supposed to... Uh we are supposed to scroll across, and you can see in this particular mode, what we're doing is we are, we, I think this is set for depth, okay, and there's a couple of items in here. There you go. Have uh, you left something in the drawers again? No, I think that is the middle, <laughs> that is probably the metal divider between the two drawers. Right. Um, so what I really want to do in this, uh, in this section before I move over towards, just go through some of the menus. Um, you can see we've got a number of different view modes. Put it here, that's probably easy for you to see. Okay, the first one you've got is you've got the spot view. Now this is exactly, well I say exactly, it's basically exactly the same as you've got for the DTEC 120. Yeah. So this now sets this device up as a radar device, so it's very quick. Get your results on a very small surface and also very quickly, okay? However, it also has the same functionality as the GMS 120, so it can do that inductive mm. scanning. So if I go down to the next option, you have something called object view. Th uh, this is the mode that I'll show you on the wall, but basically what this does is as you scan left and right, it will automatically populate this map with two things, material, uh, whatever's in the wall by material and by depth. Right? This is the first device that's actually telling you how deep that material is in mm. the substrate that you're scanning. There are two extra modes, Signal View 2D, and we've got Signal View. Now, I'll keep these a mystery for now. Mm -hmm. I'll do a demonstration before I show you what these, what these, how these work and what, why you'd want these modes on you. Um, on the old, I say the older, on the previous one, DTEC 150, you had most of these modes, but you did not have Signal View 2D. So this is mm -hmm. the additional extra mode, which I would like to talk to you about later. Now, before we go to the wall, I would like to show you as well we use the left and right buttons. It might be hard for you to see on the screen there, but you've got all these different materials. Remember, I think I listed them off at the beginning, but you've got your brick universal, you've got your concrete. Important to note that you can change the detection depth. So you can calibrate the device on, on the thickness of the concrete that you want to detect. You don't want to, sometimes you don't want to detect too much through the concrete because you might end up scanning things on the other side or too deep. Mm -hmm. So you can go from eight, 12 and 20 centimeters Nice. Um, drywall, right? This is what I'm going to set it on before I start working on the drywall. Cause so, so we are giving the tool as much information as we can so it can determine what it's look, what it is different in the wall. So, that's, you know, a, yeah, so that's, that's, how, that's how it's working as usual. The usually. preset settings given the material that you're using. So. Okay, panel heating, uh, vertical core bricking, and then you've got horizontal coring brick. And then you've got this one, which is the early age concrete. So if it is newly late, newly poured, yeah. um, if you set it for this setting, at least it'll give you a better chance of getting the results you want. Because there is that yeah. water moisture will have a dif have a, a inter Definitely. interference effect. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to quickly pop that back on to drywall. Well, Dan's probably going to run over to the camera, I, I suppose. The camera. Um, so uh, in summary, remember it is up to uh, 200 uh, millimeters maximum depth of detection. Now, depending on what's in that wall, uh, again. Uh, we've had the, both the GMS and the DTEC 120 scanning that wall. It's told us already that we know that there's live wires at the bottom. We do have metal uh, in there, and it was a ferrous metal, so we've obviously got metal studding. But it hasn't told us two things. It hasn't told us uh, how deep it is in the material, uh, and it hasn't really shown us, uh, we haven't got any information on, on where they are in relation to each other. We would have to mark the wall separately. Now let me show you how this tool adds extra benefit to you as a user. All right, drywall, All right, set for drywall as I said. First thing obviously I'm going to do, uh, I will put my hand on the wall, although I must admit the DTEC 200 is so much better that having to earth yourself is less of a priority, but still good practice because it is still working on the same inductive uh, technology. It is using radar if I was to put this on center view, but for this scan, I am going to be using that inductive electromagnetic scanner. Another reason for holding your hand on the wall is if you overreach, you don't want to be falling <laughs> over. 
that's kind of not the professionalism. <laughs> true, true. Um, on that topic, actually, I mean, you, it's uh, even when you're scanning on things like ladders, you might want to consider the fact that you you, you have to earth yourself while you're on your ladder as well, because you might not get a decent result. So, um, if you punch in on this one, Dan, for a second, if you can, hopefully you can see on that screen. Yeah, you'll see. I'll scan move it to one side, so you can so you can see. There's a number of little um, little peaks appearing here, or little blips. This is telling me, surprise, surprise, there is magnetic metal. It's got on the bottom of the screen, it's blue, and it's got a little magnet, so correct. It's ferrous metal, it's what I expect, that's what the other devices have told me. Now, if I scan along, I'm going to extend my range, and then I'm going to do a couple wipes. It is still using the same kind of uh, scanning technology on the GMS, although it is far more advanced, but the more information you give the tool, by progressively and gently scanning this left and right, the more detailed the information is going to be. Okay, fine. So I can tell, yes, I've got my stud as expected. If I go along around 60, 60 millimeters along here, just up to here, I can see there's my second one. And I can see there's a number of other things I've detected, some non-metal. So these are some other wooden structures as I go through it. So there might be some wooden studding in this wall as well. Okay, so this is, hopefully you can see that this has given me a much more detailed picture. You can see there's plenty of different items that are further in the, uh, in the, in the wall. You can see here I've got uh, something that's metal, but it's up to like 7.3 centimeters deep. This is something that none of the other products could give you this information because this is now scanning depth for me. You've got a wooden stud here. I'm guessing it's wood. I'm pretty sure it's going to be wood. Uh, about 3.7 centimeters deep. And then if I went back here, you can see that that original um, original ferrous metal stud, that's right up on the surface. That's right behind the wall, Dan, isn't it? So yeah. that's what I'll expect to see. But you can see you've got a lot more information here. Do you want to now, take a screenshot of that so that we can show it on the macro later? Yeah, I will do that. So again, one of the other features, the ability to save that. I've got a little camera button on the bottom there. I will be showing you some other, I'll be showing you some um, other um, uh, pictures that I'd saved earlier in the day just to give you some examples on the different modes. So that's one of the important things. Now we've got the ability to save the data and export it for later. Now I want to change the mode very quickly just to cover all the different features. You got spot view here. So remember just like the DTEC 120 I can turn this into a very similar device. I can just pop it on the wall. I can see very, it's very sensitive but there's your center here. I don't have to do the multiple scan. I don't have to do the multiple scans. I can just put the device straight on the wall because it's now using the radar technology. Doesn't need the calibration. Having the wheels does help as well, but you could just slide the device on the, along the wall, and there's my center. Okay. There's one last example. I'll probably pop down to the, the plug and just show you what it looks like when we get a, a live wire. <coughs> I will change it out of drywall, out of the spot center mode, and I will move it into, again, the object view. Okay, I've barely done one scan there. I'll bring it up to you so you can see. Automatically there found, change color to yellow. It says it's live. It's detected where that live wire is. I could do multiple passes to calibrate it a bit nearer, but for me, that's pretty good already. Oh, I forgot my pencil. So, if you come back up to the top here, I will. I'll show you one last, one last little tip when using this device. When you're scanning across the wall, <coughs> let's just find that stud again. It's over here. Okay, there's my stud. You've got a number of little indexing marks here. You can hopefully on the screen you can see. Oh, see if I stand on that plug, I made that a live wire. <laughs> Let's clear that. There we go. <clears throat> okay, um, you've got a couple of indexing marks here, top and bottom. So you can also see on the screen, and I'll show you on a close up when we get to the overhead, you've got these red lines either side of the center of the scanning mark. That indicates the actual width of the machine. So what you can do, if you want to, is you can make a mark here and uh, a mark on the top, and then you could index those lines. So dead center there is where you detect the center. In addition, if you needed to, <clears throat> you could move the center of the, of the detected item to one of the red lines into the center of here. If I draw a line here, I'll know it's there. And I can draw a line here and then index that single mark. So I can find very quickly where that 
uh, to mark on the wall where that um, that uh, the detected uh, material the sub within the substrate is. Okay, so I think uh, as a demo. I think that's hopefully okay. Obviously, uh, if I was doing something like detecting in concrete, it would be the same. I would just change to a different mode. Uh, and depending on the age, I would change to whether or not an early age concrete as well. So again, remember the best thing to do is calibrate the tool for whatever substrate you're going to be detecting. Um, but that's all you really need to do with the 200. It's very smart. It does a lot of the thinking for you. So let's get back to the desk and I'll show you some of the close-up features. All right, so I think I might Rob, go straight to the overhead cam for a second, and let's have a look and show you where you can access some of the additional mode, uh, the additional information. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is in the gallery. I want to show you the, some of the pictures that we've taken and that, that last one that we've taken as well. Mm. So let's have a look here. Uh, I, can tell you, I can tell you I haven't changed the date on that. <laughs> Don't think it's 12 by 1, but it doesn't matter. I need to update that clearly. Okay, here's your screenshot of the wall that we scanned here. And you can see, you can scroll left and right. I didn't scan that much of the wall there, but you can see that there's a lot of information on here already. It's a bit hard on that screen for you to see. That white one's a bit hard for you to see, but that's saying 2.1 centimeters. You can see on the this uh, ferrous metal, it's 1.6 centimeters deep into the material. Uh, and then you can see there's a number of information. You've got your scale along the top here, so that's ex that will measure how far you've gone left and right. And then you've got the scale here, very simply showing you how deep the material is. Okay, so that's just in that setting. Now, I've got some examples of some of the two other modes we've got here, because you've got a question about, if you're in the measuring modes, sorry, not this one, sorry, Let me go back to the main screen, measuring modes, and you've got signal view. Uh, I'll see if I can do a quick scan of this desk, just to show you how it looks different to the, the, the object view, because now what we're doing is we're just getting raw data. Okay, it's not the, the tool is not going to be trying to uh, interpret this information. It's just going to give you the raw data. There's a nice spike there. So I'll bring it back. So you can see there's a very big spike there. That means there's something there. And you can see exactly where the signal's strongest. So that's where the center's going to be. Now, there could be some examples. Let me cut back to the wide for a second, Rob. Uh, there, there, there are a couple of examples where that might be useful, right? Because if you're scanning multiple uh, a substrate that might have objects that are quite close to each other, there's a good chance of two things happening. Um, you've got a chance that the, it might misinterpret those two objects as one object, or if you've got a number of these objects quite evenly spaced out, say rebar, mm. you can get an effect called ghosting. So you might end up getting double the readings because it's thinking there's something in between. That's it. It's, bear in mind that the, uh, the graphics for that, the original uh, setting we have on there tries to cram as much information into a visual display as it can. Mm -hmm. uh, using the signal view, um, you get a clear indication of the peaks. So mm -hmm. what, what you'll be able to do, if you have a a large signal but with two peaks is most likely that you've got two separate readings. Right. So Rob, if you jump over to the overhead for a second, I'll just show you an example here. You can see there's there's distinct peaks here. So there, it could be a chance that I was detecting a wall where there are uh, two items that are quite close, but it might only detect one item in the mm. middle between the two. So it, it could get confused. I'll see whether or not, I think might have had it in, is it this one? Uh, I think it was that one there, for example. Luckily, the scanner it had enough resolution that it could detect all the different items. But you can see the, the signal view it gives you far, a far more accurate reading on what we've got there. You can see the two very strong peaks and then a much smaller one this side. So it's one of those things that not one single mode will do everything you want. Yeah. We thoroughly recommend, especially for a device this sophisticated, that you can scan in whatever mode you wish first, you could go straight to the, the, the first mode, which is, let me just set it up for you, which is the um, spot view, okay? You could qui really quickly pop it on the wall, yeah, that's my fist, you could pop it on the wall and uh, get a, a quick reading of, oh, there's something here, there's something here. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. However, in my personal preference, actually, I'd pop it straight onto the object view, do your, your wall scan, yeah. and then, once you've done that, I'd go back and use signal view to see whether or not I've got the right the, the information that corroborates what I've got in the, the item view. That again, if, if you pass it multiple times over in that, that initial view, it will clarify to a certain degree, but mm -hmm. again, the signal view really cleans that up. Yeah. The example, a good example would be uh, if you had um, a large pipe in concrete, for example, or any material, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter, but concrete's a good example. If you were scanning across that, 
it would probably detect it would detect it, mm -hmm. um, but it might not detect the width of it, especially if it's a large pipe. Instead, what it might detect is it might detect the absolute the the void in the center mm -hmm. as an object. So it detects the center, but it's not detecting the width of the item. Mm -hmm. If you pop into into pop into signal view. You'll see very clearly that there's a signal from one end of the pipe all the way to the other end yeah. of the pipe. So yeah. you can see the width, the, the, the width of that item in there. You get a quite, quite easy to interpret waveform of exactly the, the profile of the right. piece that you're looking for. So yeah, it is a more expensive product, yeah. um, but hopefully you can see that it gives you a lot more options. You're not just limited to one or two features, or in the case of uh, the DTEC 120, just the, the spot feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got the ability to do a number of things. But most importantly, the ability to save that data and export that for later. So it's all part of like the connectivity features that we have on our measurement tools, allowing you to very quickly document uh, the information that you're getting when on site. Uh, and exactly. the fact that the tool is really quick to use really helps too, especially if you're doing that kind of like initial surveying phase where you might not be getting paid. Well, if you have a customer right in front of you as well, a clear mm. visual indication speaks a thousand words, really. Let's have a quick look, see if I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, yeah, I think we've done pretty well. I mean, the signal view is one of the hardest ones to explain, mm. um, but as long as you know out there, you've obviously got your object view, you've got your spot view, signal view 2D. Mm. That's the one I didn't show you, that's right. Signal view 2D, so this is what makes this tool different, is the fact that, if I go to the overhead second, you'll see out of the four options, you've got this third one. So what you've got here is signal view. All right, I'll have to, I'll have to do a quick scan of the desk and I'll come back. Is Dan's mug in the drawer? Is that what we're seeing? Uh, it could be. It could be. Um, but what, is, what it can give us is it can also give us, it combines both signal strength, oops, put that there. It provides both signal strength and depth strength as well. Yeah, so you, you can see the intensity there of the signal that it's getting. Yeah. There. I mean, I must admit, this isn't the best example, but you can see that the, uh, this desk is relatively uniform, and you can see on this side there's, there's a gap there, so it's probably detecting the two different drawers, actually. Yeah. Um, so in this mode, you get additional information, something that you didn't get with the uh, DTEC 150 yeah. SV and the just standard uh, 150. So, I mean, applications, I mean, we've covered quite a lot. It's not just limited to things like the DTEC 200, although, yes, I must admit, yeah. the DTEC 200 is by far the best machine in the range out of the three. Um, but these are tools that, I don't know, building contractors, standard people like that, uh, yeah. interior fitting. Exactly, and so, so problem, problem solving as well, mm. um, especially if you're trying to avoid rebar, particularly putting up uh, staircases or anything like that. It's the last thing you want to be doing mm. is compromising rebar um, in a poured concrete uh, wall. So yeah. It gives um, you the opportunity to avoid it. Exactly. For, for me, it's obvious things like renovation and installation. If you're trying to mm. find something to do a fixing, Perfect. You'll find with all these devices, that's perfect. It's also good for avoiding things if you don't want to be damaging. You don't want to get those water strikes like mm -hmm. we talked, especially for renovation. Yeah. And this is renovation, especially for older buildings. Uh, many of the buildings we get around here in London and the London area, mm. you might not have up-to-date plans. That's it. I mean, you can work out a, a lot of live cables for just predictable construction mm -hmm. methods, but going back further and. Um, not knowing what's in the wall, that the wiring could go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty with these is you can scan up and down as uh, vertically and horizontally as well, so you can really narrow in the item that you're looking for. That's right. Uh, we always advise horizontal first, mm -hmm. and then you then track everything horizontally after, yeah. especially with something like the DTEC 200, the wheels mm -hmm. makes that very easy, very nice. And Just to make sure you haven't got a pipe in the wall that's doing a, a nice 90 degree <laughs> bend out of the way. Or that's right. Right, okay, so I don't know what time it is because I've taken my watch off so I didn't interfere with any of the readings. So yeah. Rob, I think we might have a few questions and maybe, depending on those, we might have it early. Well, it's, it's, it's barely early, it's four minutes to five. You've oh, done a great job. Done, a, done an hour, <laughs> done nearly an hour. I know we had some technical difficulties, but we've done pretty good for three products. But yeah, absolutely, we've got some questions. Uh, we have, in fact, we've got a, quite a nice comment here from Matthew Tucker to begin with. He said, this Bosch Detect 120 is what I was looking for uh, a great video about it and how it's used. This is one tool I've wanted to get for a while now. Thank you for the info on it. Yeah, I mean, what we, uh, what Danny and I do anyway is we produce as much co digital content as we can out there. This has been a bit heavy, but yeah. it's, it's, well, heavy, but hopefully quite casual. Uh, we, we are going to be putting out a video specifically talking about these two devices because they're very similar, but they're very different. Mm. Um, but we also want to do some more in-depth instructional videos, hopefully fun. Um, definitely more fun than reading the instruction manual, we hope. Very much so. I'm far better looking yeah. than the instruction manual, I'm sure. Well, you say yeah. that. Well, I know. But either way, one of us, 
uh, we'll be doing some, or both of us will be doing uh, some instructional videos on these products alone yeah. because uh, there's a lot of, we wouldn't say misinformation, don't mm. use that word, um, but a bit of misunderstanding on what these tools can and can't do and also how to get the most out of them. And hopefully today, over the hour, we're showing you some pro tips on how to get the best, most accurate results mm. out of it. But hopefully we've also shown you some features that um, you might not have known these tools do that mm. might just incentivize you in getting into uh, the wall scanning or the, the, the Bosch professional uh, detection range. Tips and tricks go a long way with these particular mm. machines as well. Yeah, every time we've been to an event, uh, it's, I'll be honest, the 200 is a great seller mm. because people don't realize this technology exists. There, isn't many, there aren't many people in the, market, in the actual market uh, that produce these kinds of tools, especially not at the price points. You might think they're expensive, but in reality... Yeah, you save two pipes, uh, uh, pipe strikes, then you've paid for that one outright. Just, oh, just right. money saving. Um, so, I mean, we're very proud of our d detection range, not just the wall scanners we've got here. We've obviously got uh, had the previous live stream where we talk yep. about our detectors and our... Um, thermal imaging thermal cameras. Imaging cameras well. Exactly. Um, these fit into that whole tool bag really mm. well. So if you are someone that goes into old properties and you need to do different kinds of um, readings, a wall scanner, a thermal camera, maybe even that, uh, the, the thermal camera, not thermal camera, the, the GIC, Yes, yeah, GIS the, uh, the, and the GIC. Gosh, we've got an entire yeah. range of different products. Mm. Inspection cameras alone. Mm. Any more questions, Rob? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so we've got one from Raphael here. He says, can the Detect 200 estimate the edges of an object in the sense of being able to estimate the width of the objects? I think you covered that, but it's worth reminding them. In signal view, that's the best way of doing it. Yeah, mm. because you're getting the most accurate information. It's not interpreting the information too much. It's raw data, yeah. isn't it? And they say you can, you can interpret that yourself. It's an awful lot easier mm. sometimes to do that. You get more of a clear, clear image of, uh, of what's going on yeah. in there. In the object view, uh, it does change. Uh, if the signal, if the information is clean enough, mm -hmm. it will give a, a larger column and the height. But it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't rely on it, absolutely. The, the function is there for signal view. Mm. So you can get a rough estimation on the thickness based on the object view, flip it, just a couple button presses, and then you can go to the signal strength view, and then you can do those scans that absolutely dial in mm. exactly where that object begins and ends. Yeah. I think we've covered it, but I'll ask it anyway. David Swan asked if we could show the signal view mode. I think we covered that just, uh, just after he mentioned it in the comments. Okay, perfect. Right. Um, if not, don't worry, we'll be producing an in-depth video showing all the all four different features. We're kind of limited in the, the room that we're in. We wanted to do a live demo in a real room because we're live. Mm. Um, but we can find many structures around site. Con we want to do some more concrete, some brick, not just drywall. Mm. Uh, we'll do a video where we cover all the different materials and show you how all the four functions on on all the products, but the DTEC 200, see how those work in all those different substrates. Yeah, we've got some cutaways here that we use sometimes, but it's surprising how accurately the depth mm -hmm. actually does show up on these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then next up, we've got a question asking whether the DTEC is IP rated. Uh, the, the, which one? <laughs> well, well the, um, the 120 is 54. I'll double check what it is for the 200C. Should be about should be this. Check that. Um, I haven't got it in my notes, which is silly it of me. Might not be IP rated due to the wheels, obviously, because they have to go through the house. It's, it's IP5, so it's, it's dust, dust. dust resistant. But mm. we, it's again, it's a very, it's an expensive product, so I probably wouldn't mm. throw that around in the rain. No. Um, but yeah, there's a slight compromise in the IP rating. So these were 54, mm. and the 200 is the five, is an IP5. Yeah. Okay. I think they come with a nice case as well. Yeah. That one. Well. David Swan. Uh, so David Swan continues and he asks, uh, when you save an image, is it limited to the current screen or the full scan width? On the 200, yeah, on the 200, it will save the entire scan. Oh, the entire scan. So mm. can you then go into the gallery and sort of scroll through what you've seen before? Yeah. Yeah. Cut to the overhead for a second. I, I, don't think, I don't think I scanned very far. Give that, give that a second to boot up. Yep, it is a bit more sophisticated device. It does have a bit more of a boot cycle mm. than some of the other tools. They're a bit quicker, I must agree. Um, yeah, once you go into the gallery, uh, yeah, get a nice little tune when it starts mm. up as well. Uh, if you go into the gallery, uh, let's go along to, let's go along to that last one I did, because I did do a little bit of a scan. Okay, and you can see, the, hopefully, it's, you can see these little arrows pulsing left and right, so you can see. It didn't go very far, I must admit, but you can see that if I wanted to, I could keep on, if I'd scanned more, 
I could go, go further along. Let's see if I've got one in a different shot. I'm going to throw you a challenging question then of my own. There you go. That's a better example. You see, I, that was a very, you can see there. That's quite a busy wall. How far? How far can it scan and save? Ooh, uh, I uh, we might have to put that in the mm. comments after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my own comment. That's that's not even from the chat. I was curious myself. No, that's a valid question. Mm. Um, I think. Just seeing if I can find it in the We've notes. We've got some pretty long walls here. I'm happy to give it a go. We'll find out. It might be there a while if it turns out to be quite a uh, significant yeah. distance. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check that because off the top of my head, the only thing I can remember is the minimum uh, distance things need to be apart. So it's yeah. around about 40 uh, millimeters for it to have a, set a thing. Objects need to be at least 40 millimeters apart so you can get an accurate detection. Yeah. Um, but for the life of me, I cannot remember maximum scan width. Yeah. So good question. I'm good question, Rob. Good question, yeah. yeah, good question. I'll, um, I'll find out for you. It'll be in the instruction manual. Mm. Um, so I'll find out before. Well. I'd be interested in Dave, the capacity of the machine that would limit that. The uh, memory capacity. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, what's the most we've done? We've done meters. We've done about. I think the most I've done in training, we've done about five, ten meters. Mm. And that's been fine. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll double check exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah you can. Um, I'm going to keep throwing questions at you because now I thought about it. Uh, I know you updated the firmware on it recently. That's something that you can do. We provide mm -hmm. software once we've upgraded these particular tools on the software side of things. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, that storage method that you transferred across to it with a micro SD card, is that the same way that you can save data and transfer it to another device, or is it only via the USB and only internal storage for uh, Yeah, it does. Data? It, it does have some internal storage, but it is far better if you use a, a, a micro SD card. It's all down on the side here. I know I've been asked in the past what capacity, the, the, what the maximum capacity of SD card you can put in there. Um, I can't for the life of me remember what it was, but um, so that yeah, stands to reason that that's going to be used for storage mm -hmm. of, of data. Yeah, um, uh, you probably already saw on the overhead camera while Dan was talking, you've got your SD card mm. and you've got a, a USB-C here so you can download the information. Mm. Uh, I do, off the top of my head, I can't remember the internal uh, memory. It's, a, it's, it's reasonable, but I would recommend always mm. getting an SD card. It's not, it's not an expensive in investment to get a little SD card, but mm. you can transfer the information directly off the tool uh, I've got, using that USB-C. I've got three gigabytes rattling around in my head for, ma for a maximum capacity of SD card that it'll fit. It'll nah, take. this, oh, this one's going to be bigger than that. Yeah, the, it's got four in it at the moment, so. Oh, is it <laughs> <laughs> it's just a number floating three, around in my three head. Three gigs there. a weird number. Yeah, I mean it's a much a much newer product, um, but yeah, there is uh, there's always question about compatibility. Mm. Uh, definitely not something I prepared for today, but I'll I'll find that out. Yeah. Again, sorry for uh, throwing oh, you a difficult. No, one we want we want difficult questions. We want as much. We want if anything, we want you guys out there to challenge us because otherwise mm. it makes our life too easy. That's it. That and now we know what to provide in the video when we create it. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Keeps us covered. Uh, we're all sorted for questions here. I oh, think we answered every question as we went along, but yeah. if you've got any more, feel free to add them to the comments below the video and we'll make sure that not only we'll respond to them in the, in, uh, the chat, but we'll also add them to the video content when we produce that later on. Mm. Cool. Yeah, well, 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 if that's us done, uh, I guess okay. thank you very much for staying and watching the stream. It's been a bit more of an an informative one. Mm -hmm. We've only been talking about three products, but it's a good video to have out there regardless. Yep. So if you've only joined the live stream late, don't worry, you can catch up with all the live streams, including this one, and, and watch it back. Uh, even if you can, even if you end up wanting to purchase one of these products mm -hmm. and you want a bit of information on, you can pop back and watch this live stream again uh, and hopefully get some nice tips on how to get the best results out of the products. So That's it. To keep, to, say, to keep up to date with, uh, with what we're producing here on the lives, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah, of um, course. There'll be plenty more to come. Yeah, so um, we'll keep a secret on what the next live stream is going to be, but mm. my, I've got hints that it's going to be a good one. It's going to yes. be a big one. Mm. So keep, as Dan says, uh, keep an eye on our social channels to see what the topic's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be working really hard on preparing for that for the next couple of weeks. So yeah. until then, uh, thank you very much for myself. And for me too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have a good one.